What started with a virus so small your eyes couldn't see it. This is about providing a future for humanity. Wir schaffen das. The Commission has decided to fine Google 4.34 billion euros. Questo piano è, è l'occasione della vita. This is Europe's man on the moon moment. We are innovating here and we hope that you like it. L'Europe, d'une force commune d'intervention. Long live Europe. Long live Europe. Vive l'Europe. Welcome to Europe Calling, a series of podcasts brought to you by the European Commission looking at the politics and policies of the Union today. With me, Paul Anderson. And me, Stephen Jones. Today, in the fight against COVID, things are starting to look promising in Europe. Vaccination rates are rising rapidly and agreement has been reached across the 27 member states on EU-wide digital COVID certificates. So, Stephen, what does this mean for us? Holidays, meals on the terrace in the soft setting sun. A rush of confidence at the real prospect of economic pickup, led by fast reactive sectors like construction, hospitality and tourism. Maybe the music festivals too that Europe is so famous for. This will be the meat of today's edition of Europe Calling with our special guest Thierry Breton, European Commissioner for the Internal Market. A warm welcome Commissioner from me and Paul. And to you our listeners. We'll be looking with Commissioner Breton at Europe's industrial strategy, updated to take account of the setbacks as well as the opportunities of COVID. We'll also examine the COVID recovery plan, first agreed way back last year and now given the green light by the Union, freeing it and member states to raise and spend money on projects. It's called Next Generation EU. This is what the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen had to say about it as she announced the go-ahead to member states just recently, reminding us of the eye-watering sums involved. It will bring 750 billion euros to repair our economies, but also to build them better, greener, more digital, more resilient. So how will the plan roll out? In the following weeks, the Commission will go to the capital markets to start raising the funds for Next Generation EU. So Next Generation EU can provide the investments we need to recover from the crisis. Before we come to our interview with Monsieur Breton, let's feel the mood in different parts of the continent as Europe, blinking in the bright light, surveys the damage and challenges ahead. First, we track down Christian Stanicic, director of the Croatia National Tourist Board in Zagreb, and he told us just how much his country's vital tourism sector has been impacted. Globally, the tourism industry has been impacted more than other industries. Croatian tourism has a huge impact on Croatian economy because uh, it has approximately 20% of the Croatia's GDP. During the pandemic, we stopped majority of investment in tourism because of the situation, and that had, has an impact on construction industry, on, of course, transport uh, equipment and so on. So, what is Croatia's tourism industry worth to the country? What was the impact of the pandemic and what's at stake? I will make a comparison with 2019 because it was our best year ever in tourism. We had in 2019 about 11 billion euros of income of tourism. So it was really, really successful and we had also 1.5 billion euros investment in Croatia. Christian will be talking to Commissioner Breton very shortly. Here's a chance for you, however, to put a point to him directly to respond to. I would like to see that in the future, tourism in Europe should have a certain budget for which will be available for direct investment in tourism because not every country is not at the same level of tourism development. Next, we travel across the Irish Sea to Dublin and to Colette Bennett, who works for Social Justice, a civil society organisation preoccupied these days with chronic housing issues. What is your assessment, Colette, of what's been exposed about the state of housing in Ireland that is swallowing up the government's attention post-Covid? Just how inadequate it is. Um, so almost since the beginning of the pandemic, the advice was to, to stay at home, to social distance, to flatten the curve and save lives. There were thousands of households who couldn't do any of that, who were in the most vulnerable situations where social distancing wasn't an option, let alone you know self-isolation. So many 
urgently required things for, you know, a, a building of social housing, um, you know, the, the, the removal of families from hotels and bed and breakfast into far more suitable accommodation, the ramping up of domestic abuse services. So, you know, there, there is huge investment required um, across the board for very vulnerable households. What do you expect the Irish government to do with its share of the 750 billion euro fund? Rather than looking at these very large scale, you know, building a new motorway, building a new commercial, you know, town centre on the outskirts of the town, we're looking at, or, you know, proposing that government actually take a much more regional approach to it, to foster local economy, to support um, local developers, local builders, and to, to take a kind of a whole of life cycle approach. Our thanks there to Christian Stanicic and Colette Bennett. And now, back to continental Europe and our key guest, EU Commissioner Thierry Breton. Commissioner Breton, many thanks again for joining us. We'll turn to questions in your portfolio as Commissioner for the Internal Market, as well as your other responsibilities in defence and in vaccine delivery shortly. But first, your response to the suggestion by Christian Stanicic in Croatia for a dedicated EU budget to promote tourism. We asked member states to come back with a lot of ideas to tackle the green transition, green deal, and of course the digital transition, and of course the resilience part. But just focusing on the tourism industry, I think we have a very interesting opportunity now to speed up, let's say, the transition in this tourism ecosystem and also to invest more exactly like what has been asked. Christian Stanicic spoke earlier of weaknesses exposed by COVID in his sector. What are the biggest points of weaknesses, do you think, in Europe's economies following COVID-19? We can speak of recovery now uh, just because of the success of the vaccination strategy of the EU. At least the perception at the beginning was shaky. The reality is that, personally, I believe that we will have probably the best strategy from all other continents at the end of the day. And when you see that today we have been able to, uh, so quickly, first to develop new vaccines, and this is mainly uh, European research, we'll be able to deliver. Uh, this is totally something totally unprecedented. Under those circumstances, what did you learn? We learned many things, and the first thing is that in the industrial strategy, we have to make sure that the supply chain for our industry, especially for key industries, will be sustainable, but also in semiconductors, and you know, this is something I'm pushing hard because I really think that it, it will be a key, a key part for our industrial strategy everywhere. China has started to create a lot of started to, to create a lot of stocks, stockpiling, and then the, there's a big disruption of the semiconductor industry. And the impact is, of course, that we are suffering in many areas today in Europe, especially in the automotive industry, but not only. We learn we need to increase uh, our autonomy here in specific areas. And um, and this is uh, what we are working on now. Next Generation EU. It's an ambitious program for linking immediate action to coherent long-term plans tied to climate and digital targets and preparedness for future pandemics. What do you see as the immediate steps overall? Well, straight away, of course, is definitely to make sure that in every single ecosystem, we know exactly how to support the reskilling uh, and preparedness of all the workforce. We will need also to make sure that the liquidity for some of these uh, companies and SMEs will be uh, uh, able to um, sustain uh, the shock because we know that that's an issue that we will have to cover probably within the second half of this year. Let's turn to EU digital COVID certificates, the passport we've been told to holiday travel and to reopening Europe's tourism industry. Questions, however, have been raised along the way that this is discriminatory to citizens who haven't received full numbers of doses. What's your take on this concern? What is extremely important is to remind to everyone that this certificate is not mandatory. It is based on a voluntary basis. So, I mean, you're not obliged to get a certificate. But by the way, it could make your life more easy. For example, to cross border, to maybe to take a plane or whatever. And um, and in that regard, we thought it was extremely important that we will have the same information and same certificate in the 27 uh, countries of our continent. This is information, or very basic information. At this point, let's get some thoughts on next steps in the COVID recovery process, specifically relating to the 750 billion euro recovery plan. Here are four issues or direct questions we'd like you to address, Commissioner, very kindly collected by the Enterprise Europe Network. First, from Ince Vixner, Director of the Latvian Technological Centre. 
First of all, we are thankful to Commissioner Terry Breton for such possibility. Why the recovery plan don't provide freedom to EU member countries to identify problematic themes by themselves and adopt the recovery plan to local business needs? Commissioner, the floor is yours. It's the first time in our history that we are able to give so much money for every single member state. But of course, it is in addition to what every single member states are doing already for their own businesses, SMEs, employees and country, of course. Next, we go to Rumin Arsenov, who's with a Bulgarian cybersecurity company called So Cyber. Mr. Breton, what is foreseen in the plan for SMEs in the cybersecurity sector and in the IT sector in general? I know it's a topic close to your heart. By the way, everything is close to my heart in my portfolio, and I have a very large portfolio. I have a big heart, if I may say so. So we have a lot of tools here, and that's a very, very important subject. Uh, 20% for the next generation EU, just focus for IT. And finally, Dimitar Stoyanov, also in Bulgaria, makes this observation. He describes himself as an aspiring entrepreneur, looking, often in vain, for capital investment. The EU significantly lags behind other nations in the venture capital sector, and many entrepreneurs from the EU are forced to move to the US or UK to develop their innovative companies. This will likely have a very negative impact on the competitiveness of the EU in the long term. How will the recovery plan address this problem? Well, I know this, uh, let's say, complaint and remark lasts for many years and decades, and I, I think it changed a lot. And of course, I don't want to criticize them because I've been an entrepreneur myself. I started my own company myself when I was 20, 25. I see the situation improving drastically in Europe. Of course, we are not yet uh, at the level of, uh, of the US, let's say. But we have a lot of tools now. And also in the ecosystems, you, I mean, of course you need you need the money and you need to have the flexibility as you would describe very well. But you need also to have the ecosystem, you need to have also the landscape, you need to have also the skills. You have, and this is why I strongly believe that things are changing. Many thanks, Commissioner, for fielding these questions from our listeners. It's often said, as I'm sure you've observed, Stephen, as well, that today's workers have slid, unchecked and unprotected, into a world of decreasing wages, job precarity, zero-hours contracts and fewer rights. Now, as Europe's economies and industrial sectors reboot after COVID, is this a chance to correct that state of affairs, to live up to promises of a more robust and socially just compact between worker and employer? Luca Vicentini, Secretary General of the European Trade Union Confederation, definitely thinks so, and the launch of the COVID recovery plan is just the moment to start. So, Mr. Vicentini, what are your key demands to the EU for the distribution of this huge package of funding? Well, the key demand is to spend the money well and to avoid mistakes that have been done in the past. It's absolutely necessary to measure exactly how many quality jobs are going to be created with this money and also make sure that we can properly manage the so-called transitions, the climate transition on the one side and the digital transition on the other side in a way that is inclusive. Nobody is left behind and we can really create a good opportunity for all. Do you believe workers' rights are under threat here in the mad rush back to economic growth? And what I mean by that is, is there going to be a new gig economy? There is no new normal to, to recreate, let's say. On the contrary, we have to build a, a more inclusive economy that can really benefit people. In this respect, having a strong social dimension embedded in the recovery plans is fundamental. Social dimension means managing the transition in a just way, but particularly creating jobs that are quality jobs, jobs that are protected and it's also fundamental that the social partners the trade unions in particular from our point of view are involved in designing and implementing the national recovery plans is social solidarity needed here with young people with women and with marginalized uh, individuals i ask this because eurostat surveys suggest fewer people care about social issues that the social agenda matters less for ordinary people than wages and job availability we have really destroyed, let's say, this uh, 
privileged situation in which Europe was in the past. The fact that we have created really a, a socially inclusive economy that now is being undermined. There is really an urgency to rebuild all this. This must be absolutely the top priority of the recovery strategy of the European Union. And it's not by chance that even President von der Leyen underlines all the time that we need to rebuild our social market economy, an economy at the service of people. We'd like to put a question on your behalf to Commissioner Breton. If you were us sitting right here in front of him, what point would you like to make? Commissioner Breton comes from the private sector and uh, had very brilliant uh, performances in the private sector as a manager. So I think he's the best placed person in the commission to make sure that together with Vice President Timmermans, uh, he should design concrete plans uh, for just transition. Commissioner, that last point is for you. What's your response? That's a very good question and it's top on our list. Discussing with all the players, big companies, startups, NGOs, unions, research centers, universities, discussing of the mid-term and long-term vision. And we have a vision, we have a strategy today. And then we are building this path, uh, ecosystem per ecosystem, in terms of skills, and then, of course, in terms of uh, quality jobs. Let's turn now to Europe's long-term industrial strategy, a big priority for this Commission. The strategy was revamped during the worst of the pandemic to take account of the new circumstances, and Commissioner, you head up this whole process. So here's my question. In the updated industrial strategy, there's a big emphasis on building single market resilience post-Covid. How exactly do you build up sufficient resilience to stand up to a pandemic of the magnitude of Covid? What did we learn? We realized that in, uh, with some of our industry and supply chains, we have been put in a very difficult situation and it was totally unexpected. So we need to be more resilient. And this is where we decided to be more resilient, including in the pharmaceutical industry, just to make sure that this will not happen again, because it was so painful. So then we decided to make a, a mapping of what is uh, critical for us in our industry. So we identified 5,000 key products or source of supply, uh, which were important. We identified 134 of them, which were extremely important and where we, we believed we were too dependent of single source. And on this, 30, 32, where we believe it's absolutely critical to reinforce ourselves. This is where, as we draw to a close, we invite you, Monsieur Breton, to reflect rather fast on issues outside of COVID-19. 30 seconds or under per each of the items we're going to fire off. Can you realise your dream of Europe as a centre of microprocessor production? No, I don't want to be the, to be the Europe to be at the centre of microprocessor production. I just uh, say that 30 years ago we were producing 40% of the capacity of, the, of, let's say, the need of the world in, in Europe. Now it's uh, 9% and we believe that uh, we should come back to 20%. How realistic is it, as you would like, to create the Googles and Facebooks of Europe? My goal is just to make sure that uh, we will have uh, clear rules uh, for informational space or digital space, which is now a new space in which we are working hard, in which we have a lot of new activities. So we just need to have some rules, create more innovation and more competitiveness. If there's one thing you want to do before your summer holiday, what is it? Since you say that I have a lot of, let's say, children in my portfolio, uh, I don't prefer one children. I want all of them to succeed together at the same time. Many thanks, Commissioner Thierry Breton, for these responses and for joining us for our discussion on so many other issues at the heart of Europe's post-COVID response. Thank you very much and thank you for your questions and the one from your partners. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, for millions of Europeans, and many more coming from outside, music festivals are an essential part of the summer. At least they were. Now they're bouncing back. But how strongly? Aren't the conditions at a festival, any festival, big or small, as ripe as you could possibly find for transmission of certain viruses? It's an issue Serge Platel has grappled with solidly for the past 18 months. He's the director of the Federation of Music Festivals in Flanders, the Flemish region of Belgium. Does he foresee a recovery of the festival scene in time for the summer season? We need to have full capacity, no social distancing, and that's the main festivals that they need that to be able to organize on a level that they can, uh, they don't lose money. Uh, we need a vaccination that everybody has to uh, have one vaccine 
at least one vaccine or have the possibility to have one vaccine. And if that's delayed because of the vaccines are not coming, then we won't be able to start up. Big festivals like Tomorrowland can future-proof themselves. How about the many smaller ones? If we are able to have a digital green pass fully working on the, the month of July and people can use it, people can work with it, I think the cost will be limited or hopefully will be less for the organization. What would you demand of the EU in terms of the support it gives to national governments in the field of culture? We are in unusual times, so unusual measures should be able. And, and if the local governments uh, think that it's necessary and it's, it's important enough to support, then I hope uh, the European government will not uh, restrain them. Thanks there to Serge Platel from the Federation of Music Festivals in Flanders in Belgium. Cheers. Bye-bye. This has been Europe Calling. Our thanks also to Commissioner Breton and to all our other guests who've joined us. That just about wraps it up. Our next podcast, due out in July before the summer break, will focus on climate change and the Green Deal, as well as on digital transformation, the EU's other big projects. Until then, take care and goodbye. Goodbye. What started with a virus so small your eyes couldn't see it? This is about providing a future for humanity. Wir schaffen das. The Commission has decided to fine Google 4.34 billion euros. Questo piano è, è l'occasione della vita. This is Europe's man on the moon moment. We are innovating here and we hope that you like it. L'Europe, d'une force commune d'intervention. Long live Europe. Long live Europe. Vive l'Europe.